Good day, YouTube. 13th of April, 2019. We are looking at the, the 1967 Boyertown Step Band. Yes, my mobile studio. This is the power inlet. We're going to do a little video on the power, how we're powering the Step Band for all of its audio gear and etc. And this is uh, kind of a good place to start. This is a uh, Hubble Marine. Hubble is the brand name. Marine is their line of products. Um, this is a 30 amp power inlet. There you go. Uh, it's rated 30 amp, 125 volts. That is a, a hot, a neutral, and a ground. And uh, plugged into that, this is a twist lock type of plug. Or should we say female cord cap? Twist lock, twist lock, you line it up, and you twist it to lock it. So this is uh, what you might find on a lot of boats, um, what I use on all of my uh, RVs type of thing. The Scooby Van's got one um, because of its uh, rugged and good looks and ability. They're very expensive. Wholesale this piece here. About $150, $60. Um, these are probably in the $30 a piece range. Buy a decent cord and so forth. And what I've got is a piece of cord. Sorry, it's kind of dark in the aisle here. But anyway, and it comes up here. I have a regular 120 volt 15 amp cord cap on it. Right now we're just plugged into my shop house power. Um, and that is also the same cord I would use if I had a small portable Honda EU series generator running outside plugged in. All right, that's the power inlet portion. It goes from here to a receptacle in the step van, and I'll show you what that is. Hang on. So this is the receptacle or plug-in, if you will. Um, it basically comes through the truck um, up. This is a... 10 gauge uh, Romex, 10 2 with ground, if you will, and it is powering this side of the receptacle. And basically, how I have engineered this electrical system is to plug in my panel by using a 20 amp rated 120 volt, 125 volt rated cord cap. I'm not going to plug into this one because it is hot for the minute, and I'm not ready for that. But I can plug it into this one. It's just a little stiff because she's a little cold. And they're all brand new. This uh, outlet, you see that little dot? That's a brown outlet. It's basically, I have it because it was a leftover from some job somewhere. Um, the green dot indicates that is a hospital grade outlet. It is also Hubble by brand. And a hospital grade outlet is uh, many times uh, more expensive, but many times better than a normal outlet in that it has to have very good grounding capabilities. The tension on the plug itself has to remain strong. Uh, if you can imagine in a hospital, um, somebody's plugging stuff in and out of the outlets uh, many, many times a day. We're at your house or your office. You plug them in, you know, at the most, maybe once a week with a vacuum cleaner. Sometimes, you know, you plug a lamp and it's there for a year. Um, they are just not built to the standards of a hospital grade. Um, a outlet you might buy for your house would be 50 cents, 75 cents, something like that. That was about $14 uh, wholesale. So I've made up my panel. This is a, a four circuit. I've just got the smallest panel I could at the Home Depot. It's a square D panel. I'm using twin breakers, all 20 amp. So it just doesn't seem like we're that focused or maybe my eyes ain't working too good. So um, this is what we call an industry sub panel. It is not a service panel. You cannot connect the neutral bus to the ground okay this one didn't come with a ground bus so i basically used a split bolt tight on my ground wires together and bonded it back to the can so the can is grounded all my ground wires are bonded or tied together with a 
split bolt very tight, very good connection. All my neutrals are landed on the neutral bus. This came with a screw so that you could bond the neutral bus to the can in the case that this was service equipment. Other, you know, like this is your main panel. This is not, you cannot bond the neutral to the ground. That would be dangerous, um, illegal, and all of that good jazz. And here we have our hot wires landed. One, two, three, and a space on the top for my air conditioner, which has been run to the center. Uh, fantastic fan location. It is coiled up over here. Should I ever want to put a roof air or a roof mounted heat pump in, the power is already run. All I'd have to do is come back and land it. I did not make it up. It does not need to come hot. It may never get hooked up. Okay, so the power sources. We just looked at the power inlet and it attaches to the outlet receptacle on the left side. The one on the right side, I have split the receptacle. Let me show you the split. This is a exactly the same receptacle as you see in that box. It's got the green dot, it's a hospital grade. This is a very high end receptacle. What you can see on both sides of it, you see the, the screws that are silver, it's a neutral side. And then there's that bracket that basically attaches the one side of the receptacle to the other. And you have to remove that on both sides. There's one on the hot side, one on the neutral side. If you remove that, you can power these outlets individually. Bang, bang. You may have a outlet near your front door that's attached to a switch on one side and it's hot all the time on this side so you can plug a lamp in and be able to turn it on as you come in. That's how that was done. If you uh, have the ability to share a neutral, meaning it's the same circuit, you don't have to pull the neutral connector off, just the hot connector off. The neutral can be the same, um, as long as, again, it's the same circuit, just one is being switched and one's not. In my case, they're completely separate, so I've pulled both. And what I have is the power inlet on one side and my 4KW built-in generator on the other side. I haven't run that wire yet, but it's coming down, and it is currently this orange one that's coiled up here. And I'm going to take it down underneath the step van at this location, I'm going to put an outlet in, follow me along here for a second, and the generator is beneath that green cloth in an enclosure that I'm still building. It'll be insulated as tight as I can. It's got a vent to the outside. It's going to be plumbed to a fuel tank, gas tank, because it's gasoline powered, 4,000 watt Honda RV generator, and it'll be plumbed to a fuel tank that's currently located right under here. That'd be the stock gas tank that was in this step van, when it was born at the factory, the step van was converted to propane, so it has a propane tank underneath this side, now abandoning the gas tank. I'm going to remove it and put in this gas tank, that one right there. I think it's a 12-gallon uh, plastic RV tank, and it's a, it'll fit nicely under there. We'll probably end up with a hole in the floor right here to fill it. You know, keep non-ethanol premium fuel in it, and it should last me hmm, probably most of the season for what I use it. The idea behind the big generator is that I could also provide power if I'm at an event that needs uh, power, and maybe I have power to spare. I'm going to have a, basically from the circuit breaker in that generator, under the floor and over to a box with an outlet in it. So I could really run that generator and have a power outlet outside the step van that I could provide for, you know, somebody that had a machine or fan or um, cooking or whatever outside. And maybe I'm not DJing, maybe we're just out partying or something. Um, it would be nice to have the ability to have that power outside of here. So. I'm going to do that and just put it in a weatherproof cover. All right, so now I've got all of my sources, or at least those two sources, uh, my generator on the right, the power inlet on the left, but yet there is an inverter sitting here. So the power source number three is this 1800 watt inverter. 
And basically, I can simply unplug this plug here and plug it in to the inverter. See there? So then all I have to do is turn the inverter on, which is hooked up. There it is. And now I can power this equipment from batteries. Currently there are three installed. There will be a fourth one over here when this is all said and done. There's an access door to the outside. This will get a floor section over it. I haven't got to that yet, but soon we'll make a floor. Okay, so that's three power sources, almost four if you look at the fact that right now I'm plugged into, we'll call it shore power, or plugged into my shop, but that could also be plugged into a portable generator, i.e. a Honda EU series generator. I have many of those and just used that one last Saturday when I used this vehicle to uh, do music and so forth at a local car show. All right, now let's get to the loads. So the first two circuits are actually the second and third breaker handles are going down the yellow 12-2 with ground Romex. I'm gonna make a turn right underneath this mirror behind the rack and put a couple of outlets, or maybe I'll split an outlet like that. I haven't decided yet, whatever I've got laying around. And they will power the plug strips. There is a plug strip running here. And the other circuit will power the plug strip that is located back there behind the mixer. Those are four foot long plug strips. I forgot to count the outlets. A dozen or so. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ten or twelve uh, outlets in each of them. And they'll run off of two circuits in the panel. Obviously, I only have enough power for whatever I'm plugged into for my source. Um, that is what it is. Um, and then the third breaker handle, fourth breaker handle, I rather, the one on the bottom is connected to another Romex, which I still on the roll. I'm still working here. Um, it's going to go under the step van following the circuit that's going back to the generator. And it's going to come up um, be either up in here or down in here to power my refrigerator and a battery charger, small uh, trickle charger for the battery that starts the generator and runs the winch for the rear ramp door. All right, that is the 110 volt power setup I'm working on in the step van. I thought I'd go over that now that I'm oh, in the middle of it and just show everyone what my plan is. Takes a little while to put all this in place. Um, and try to keep it looking decent and all that stuff. It is what it is. Um, I am kind of running things on the surface. It is I thought early on when, when I was designing a step van, how could I hide all of this? And I go, you know what? I'm not going to hide it. We're just going to put it in. We're going to try and keep it neat and presentable. And uh, that's the best we can do. So I'm going to get back to running these wires and uh, get things terminated. Get my box set, get my outlets in. That way I can plug this thing in and um, we'll not have to string extension cords anymore. I can put the cover back on or put the cover on the panel. i got to punch out one of the other knockouts. I can put the cover back on and we've made some reasonable progress this weekend. I did have to go to work today, so I didn't make all the progress that I could have made but and i'm gonna call it a day early so we're gonna get as far as we get so guys that's the progress that is the 110 volt wiring that i've been anxiously awaiting opportunity to get installed so making progress thanks for watching and commenting and please hit the subscribe button if you haven't hit the bell notification so you're get notified every time we put a video out and that's two or three of them a week generally on the weekends we'll catch you on the next video